Before diving into prerequisites for deployment, let's understand the platform components that can be involved in Cortex Data Foundation. The one component that is absolutely mandatory is Google BigQuery. This is where the data and data models will reside. By default, any scheduled scripts for data ingestion or to keep data updated are scheduled and executed in directed acyclic graphs, or DAGs, in Cloud Composer, which is a managed version of the open source solution Apache Airflow. If you want to use another scheduler, we try to keep the Python and SQL logic separate so you can cleanly take these scripts to your scheduler of choice. If you opt for this, I recommend keeping the generated templates in Git versioning so you can keep any potential changes easy to discover during an upgrade. Another core component is Cloud Build. We use Cloud Build to orchestrate the deployment using open source container images maintained by us, the Cortex engineering team. The starting point is the cloudbuild.yaml file available in the Cortex Data Foundation Super module, which will in turn trigger a cloud build deployment file in the submodules. The submodules can be executed independently with their own cloud build deployment file from their own separate Git repository. This is useful if you are only interested in deploying and maintaining the models for that specific source or if you are using a framework like Dataform. If these components are new to you, you will find some materials to get comfortable with them in our GitHub readme. I strongly recommend understanding the fundamentals of Google Cloud Platform and the core components before attempting a deployment in production so you can be confident in your setup. Now that you understand the basic components, the next step is to understand what your deployment will look like. This will vary depending on your technical and business requirements. For example, which workloads are you deploying? Cortex Data Foundation has models for multiple data sources like SAP and Salesforce. Are you deploying these workloads separately? Or are you deploying them all together? Are you using one project for technical access and one project for business access? or are you using one project for all types of datasets? You will need to identify the project structure beforehand and make sure that you will be able to set up the security for deployment to succeed. You will find more information about these configurations in the readme. Now that you know which workloads you are deploying and in which projects, it's time to understand dataset structures. The reporting dataset is the user-facing dataset. This is where business users will connect their reporting or visualization tool of choice, such as Looker or Google Sheets, and generate insights. The reporting dataset will have multiple types of technical artifacts, such as tables, views, and functions. These are controlled from a YAML file we will configure later. The reporting dataset taps into another dataset that has the base replicated tables. We will call this the CDC or Change Data Capture Process Dataset as it contains the latest version of the truth or a digital twin of the source table or API. All workloads assume that data landed here is in a specific structure. This structure tends to mimic the data types and field names as they were produced by the source. Depending on the workload and the integration mechanism, you may have a dataset where the data lands into a raw landing dataset for processing before it reaches the expected format in CDC processed. Let's take SAP as an example. Some replication tools follow an append always pattern. This means every update or deletion to an existing record will be inserted as a new record in BigQuery and you will need a script to search for the latest timestamp and operation to understand the state of that record. These new records can be processed in batch to update the CDC process dataset so it has the latest version of the truth. If you are using the integration scripts that Cortex Data Foundation delivers out of the box for Salesforce, these merge or upsert the new records on landing, so you do not need a raw landing dataset, as the CDC dataset will always be updated with the latest replicated changes. 
If you're using another tool to replicate data for Salesforce, you will find mapping files so that the CDC layer has the expected names and types for fields, so the reporting dataset is successful. If you're landing the data in the right format and the replication tool is doing an upsert or merge on landing, then you likely do not need a raw dataset at all. Additionally, you will find two more datasets for artifacts that span across workloads. For example, a time dimension is an artifact that is used by SAP and Salesforce equally, so there is no point in maintaining it independently. This reusable model is deployed before all workloads during the Data Foundation deployment. We call these pre-processing K9 modules. Conversely, some reusable additive datasets like Weather or Google Trends or data models that combine two workloads like Google Ads and SAP are deployed after all workloads are done. We call these post-processing K9. These are only available to deploy through the Cortex Data Foundation Core Deployer in the Git Supermodule. So if you want to use the submodules independently, you will need to incorporate their deployment into your flow. To summarize, you will have one optional dataset to land raw replicated data, one dataset that has the latest version of the truth, called CDC processed with the latest changes from the source and the types and formats expected by the reporting dataset, the reporting dataset, two datasets for reusable models, one project for the technical dataset called source project, and one project for the business users where the reporting dataset goes called target project, which may or may not be the same as the technical one. Last but not least, check the description of this video for more information and a list of questions to help you gather the information you need before starting configuration and deployment.